Samsung are definitely changing up the Note 20 series this year. It isn't just a carbon copy of the S20 phones. We're getting some new technologies and a different setup between the base model and the premium model. So let's get into the top 10 changes and upcoming features in the Note 20 series this year. The first one is a new design. Certainly they are getting bigger and taller. The screen aspect ratios are going to that taller aspect ratio that we're seeing in pretty much all phones these days and what the S20s came to as well this year. This means that these screens also can get bigger. So they're going to be growing over what we got in the Note 10 phones. All in all, this change just brings them in line to what we're seeing with really modern phones having these tall aspect ratios and when turned on their side, you can watch videos in those wider ratios. So definitely a good thing overall for me in both the Note 20 and the upper end phone, which may be called the Note 20 Plus or the Note 20 Ultra. I guess we'll have to wait and see what Samsung want to call it in the end. Samsung are introducing a new type of screen technology in the Note 20 Ultra, I'm going to call it. This is a new type of screen backplane technology, which is an upgrade over to what they're currently using. This is going into the Note 20 Ultra, not the Note 20. LTPO is a different technology and actually the main benefit is that the power draw from the screen is reduced. So it's more efficient by about 15 or maybe even 20% over the current technology. As the screen is one of the biggest draws on battery life, the benefits are obviously clear. You can just get longer battery life from the same size battery pack. LTPO also has another advantage though, and that is that it can change the refresh rate to pretty much any level from one up to, well, in this case, 120 Hertz that will be coming in the Note 20 Ultra. This means that we can basically get those always on displays like we get on smartwatches. And when it is using an always on display, it can turn the refresh rate on the screen all the way down to one Hertz, which means that you're barely drawing any battery life whatsoever. So there are some really big battery saving implications by using this technology. We're getting a flat screen on the Note 20 according to all the leaks. So the Note 20 Ultra going with this more expensive LTPO screen technology and a curved display. The Note 20 sticking with the older type of screen tech called LTPS and also a flat display. This will apparently be completely flat, the same as we get in, for example, like the A A71 series or the A51 series. No small curved, no 2.5D glass, apparently a completely flat display for this phone. Why would they do this, you ask? Well, it should come a lot cheaper. So flat displays are about a third of the price of uh, curved displays. They're much cheaper. And the only reason that they would do it is because they want to reduce the selling price, the RSP of this phone. And we would expect the Note 20 to be coming at a much more affordable price considering that Samsung are doing this. As we've seen by leaks though, and we can compare both the Note 20 Ultra and Note 20, the same design, just the flat screen versus the curved display. All in all, the information for the Galaxy Note 20, that's the base model, shows us that the screen definitely is not what we would consider the really high-end flagship screens from Samsung. So a full HD resolution, not a quad HD resolution. And according to Ice Universe anyway, 60 Hertz refresh rates. That means no high refresh rates like we are getting on the Note 20 Ultra and also the entire Galaxy S20 series. That would definitely be a different approach from Samsung having a flagship product with really sort of high mid range end specs. So that's what leads me to believe that this Galaxy Note 20 base model is just going to be a cheaper phone all around. Samsung will apparently use the same image sensor as is found on the Galaxy S20 Ultra in the Note 20 Ultra. So this is that insane 108 megapixel image sensor that they call the HM1. We can expect all the same specs as we get on the S20 Ultra, so 8K video recording, and also the ability to take a high resolution image from a video clip that you're recording at the time, which I think is a pretty good feature. Samsung, however, have added what looks to be a another sensor to help the phone focus. As we know, the S20 Ultra has suffered and suffers from focusing issues in some different uh, occasions, especially if something's close to it. 
And so Samsung looked to have added what seems to be a laser autofocus or another way to focus using uh, lasers. So we'll have to see how that works out, if there's a big improvement, but definitely an extra sensor to help with focusing on the Note 20 Ultra that the S20 Ultra didn't have. The Note 20 Ultra is also expected to carry the selfie camera from the S20 Ultra into this phone. So that would be an upgrade overall. It's a new image sensor for the S20 Ultra. I really like that image sensor. I think it takes really natural looking selfies and very good 4K video from the selfie camera. So I'm quite pleased that the rumors say that it is carrying over into the Note 20 Ultra. There aren't many rumors about the selfie camera on the Note 20 base model. So maybe we can assume that just the Ultra is getting this one and the Note 20 base model may be getting the same one as the S20 and S20 Plus. Still a good camera, but I really like that 40 megapixel one that they should be using on the higher end model. According to the leaks anyway, we're getting a brand new mint green color, which I really hope looks good. Also copper is gonna be a big theme of the Note 20 series, both the Note 20, the Note 20 Ultra, and the Galaxy Buds that should be releasing alongside this series, all having a copper color. I also really hope that they bring us some matte backs because matte finish on the back just looks so, so good. That's my hope. There have been no leaks about this though, so, I guess we'll have to assume that they're keeping with that shiny glass finish. Another semi disappointing thing is that it looks like they're gonna be keeping the same ultrasonic fingerprint sensor that they have used in their previous phones. So the S20 phones, the Note 10 phones, this ultrasonic fingerprint sensor is pretty good. It works well. Samsung say it is more uh, secure than optical fingerprint sensors, but no upgrades in this department. Qualcomm have developed a brand new ultrasonic fingerprint sensor that they call the Sonic Max. It's much bigger, it's quicker and better in every way according to Qualcomm. But according to leaks, it's just not ready for prime time yet and won't be ready to put into the Note 20 phone. So it looks like we can confirm that they'll be keeping that same sensor. I'm really glad that the Note 20 Ultra at least is using a periscope zoom camera. The Note 20 base model apparently not getting one. But another good thing for me anyway is that they're taking away that 100x space zoom and bringing it to a more reasonable 50x according to leaks. 100x zoom really just was completely useless. It just took images that looked absolutely ridiculous. But up to 30 times it was one of the best zoom cameras I've used, if not the best. And in video, the five times optical zoom was just so crisp and clear. It was amazing. However, it is changing on the Note 20 Ultra. Instead of using a 48 megapixel sensor under there, like the S20 Ultra does, they're going for a 13 megapixel sensor. So some differences in the uh, image resolution, but they're not pushing it to 100 times, so it may actually work out being a higher quality image overall. We'll just have to wait and see what the image quality is like and the zoom range is like before really knowing how it's going to be compared to the S20 Ultra. And at number 10, we've had a ton of rumors regarding a possible upgrade in the chipset, at least for the Exynos versions. And we know all the troubles that Samsung have had this year with Exynos chipsets. They have just lagged further and further behind Snapdragon chipsets, which is fine, but not okay if you're selling the same phone in different markets with different chipsets, one significantly worse than the other at the same price. That is just not fair. And yeah, a lot of Samsung fans are just not happy about it. So there have been loads of rumors and leaks that Samsung may actually move to a six nanometer chipset possibly called the Exynos 992. This will give the phone in Exynos regions a bit of a performance boost and hopefully bring it nearer the Snapdragon 865. The leaks have gone pretty quiet on this one. It was leaked quite heavily before. So I guess we'll wait and see what they do. I'm really hoping they do bring it because the Exynos variants do need to get a performance boost to bring them at least somewhere near the Snapdragon variants. I think there is definitely enough to like in this series. You get a lot of good hardware upgrades that really are unique to Samsung in the Note 20 Ultra. The Note 20 itself, I fully expect to be a cheaper or more affordable phone. It's using a flat screen and really technologies that have been around for a while. So there is no reason why that should be even a thousand dollars. It should be under that considering all of the technologies that they're using. So yeah, there is a lot to like, I believe, in this series. And in terms of the future, under screen cameras, 
and uh, AMD graphics in very powerful Exynos chipsets. I think we'll have to wait a while for those, maybe in the S21 series, but they're soon too. Not for the Note series, but enough in this series, I believe. And we'll see what they really have for us when they launch in about a month's time. Okay, that's it. Thank you for watching, guys. Subscribe if you liked it, and I'll see you in the next one.